One of the biggest challenges and frustrations of gardening is our inability to control all of the circumstances. Of course, there are things we can do. We water, we fertilize, we mulch, we can use shade cloth or frost cloth. All of those things can help in certain circumstances, but there are some things that are just completely out of our control. Now for me here in Ohio, this spring has been a lesson in patience and humility. The weather is one of those big factors that is predominantly out of my control. It was unusually cold and gray and wet for months. We barely saw the sun, it barely got above 40 degrees, and so much rain. Even in my raised planting areas, my poor little seedlings were waterlogged. And then, one day in early May, the sun finally decided to come out, and with it came a temperature hike of almost 40 degrees. And we've been in the mid, some days upper 80s for almost two weeks now. While it was wonderful to finally see the sun and feel some warmth, temperature hikes like that one are extremely stressful on plants, especially moderate weather loving cool season crops like brassicas, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbages, those types of vegetables, and some leafy greens. And some of you in similar growing climates to me may be wondering why, after months of babying your plants and trying to do everything right, you are seeing them now bolt or button, which is putting on tiny kind of immature heads. When you have broccoli or cauliflower plants that are this size and are already trying to put on a little head, or they're putting on a head but it's very, very loose, or they're going straight to flower. After only being transplanted out about a month or so ago, that is most often due to stress. Unfortunately, this plant is never going to put on a nice, big, tight head like I want to see in a broccoli. Now, don't get me wrong, healthy, well-established brassicas can tolerate some periods of time into the mid 80s without problem. The problem arises when you've got plants that are already stressed and that can be from a variety of reasons but in this case it was due to temperatures that were too cold even with frost cloths on the plants, too much water and in the case of my plants in the culture bed deer actually feeding on them. All of those things can stress out a plant and then we're dumping extra stress on them by jumping again 30 to 40 degrees in just a matter of a day or two. Now stress can come in all forms. Other things that can stress out these plants include a lack of water, improper nutrients, either not enough, or in some cases too much nitrogen in particular, planting at the wrong time of the year. So if you're planting late and these things are going into the truly hot temperatures of the summer, a lot of times they'll do the same thing. Even things like too much pest pressure or too much feeding damage on a plant can cause it to button or bolt. Now there are of course things we can do to mitigate some of that stress and hopefully avoid the problems with buttoning or bolting or loose heads. The biggest single factor being ensuring that your plants are at peak health. Starting with healthy robust seedlings, planting out at the proper time of year, providing adequate levels of moisture and nutrition, and avoiding any kind of excess pest feeding damage. But things like drastic temperature swings are difficult to control, even when utilizing frost cloths or shade covers. Another big factor is seeking out varieties that are tolerant to stress and heat. One good thing to come out of this year is that I was actually doing a trial on broccoli varieties that were supposedly heat and or stress tolerant. So this spring has been a perfect atmosphere to test those claims out. So you can see here, we've got a variety called Gemini. This actually did really well for me last spring and fall, but it is not faring well with these stressful jumps in temperature. These plants are putting on heads earlier than they should, and these heads are very, very loose. Now there is a chance that sometimes with broccoli, when you harvest the main head, those varieties will continue to put out side shoots. Fingers crossed that that actually happens, but these may be past the point of no return. However, here I've got a variety called Emerald Crown. These have not started any head production yet. So I'm hoping since our weather is supposed to kind of regulate here and get a little cooler, that these will fare all right this year. Here I've got a variety called Gurney's Blue Ribbon, and these are forming heads a little earlier than I'd like, but that head actually doesn't look terrible. Maybe a little looser than I'd like to see, but it might be okay. This is a variety called Gypsy. Again, very small heads. We'll see how those turn out. 
and Fiesta, which was supposed to be a heat tolerant one. No signs of head formation yet. And then I'll show you over here, these plants in my hugel bed, which were stressed from all directions, are faring worse than anybody. So I just stuck all my leftover seedlings in here. I transplanted them way too late. So they were sitting in their trays longer than they should have been, which also stresses them out. Some of them were nibbled off almost completely by deer shortly after planting. Plus they've had all the heat and cold issues that all the other plants have had. So you can see here, these are little plants that are already forming tiny heads. There is no recovering at this point. I'm basically better off probably just cutting these, cooking up the greens and heads and all, and planting something else in this spot at this point, unfortunately. I'm sharing this in the hopes that for some of you who are going through a similar situation as I am here in Ohio, and especially for those of you that are relatively new to garden, if you're seeing similar things in your brassica plants this spring, <laughs> just please don't give up. Sometimes this happens and it's unfortunate, but know that if you're doing everything else right and this is still going on, this is just something that cannot always be controlled. Sometimes we have springs like this. Usually I'm able to get in a really nice crop of brassicas if I plant early enough in the spring. This spring has just been a challenge. The other thing I wanna remind folks of is that in many growing areas, mine included, and again, I'm in Ohio zone six, and my first estimated fall frost date is usually right around the middle of October. We've still got a second chance for many of these crops. Fall is a great time to replant a lot of these cool season crops that you would also do in the spring. And I will link videos above, as well as including video links in the description of this video below that include all of my fall planting date. So when I'm starting from seed, when I'm transplanting, when I'm harvesting, all of that. So that if you want to give this a try in your own garden, you can. I highly encourage everyone to give fall gardening a try, especially if for whatever reason you missed out on your spring planting window. And I'd love to hear from you. How is your spring garden doing this year? And are you seeing the same crazy weather where you are growing that I am here? Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.